Yeah, good afternoon YouTube. So this is my Central Machinery 7 by 12 inch horizontal vertical bandsaw. I have a problem with it. Over here is the breaker. I replaced this at one time. The old breaker burned out and I put in a on-off breaker switch here. And if I turn it on, there we go. The saw is running, but my switch doesn't do anything anymore. Yeah, I'm glad I actually put that uh, toggle switch in there because that's let me use the saw the last couple of days. I just don't get the automatic shut off. And I've replaced the switch once a couple of years ago. The problem is the saw has cooling on it. So it's got a second switch down here to turn on the coolant, you can see there. And so there's a water and oil mix that come out here and this switch gets splashed by water and oil basically but what I did was I picked up an oil and water resistant switch they run about I think it was seventeen dollars so I'm gonna give that a try here I will pull this apart and we'll take a look at it I'll unplug the saw before I do that okay here I got everything apart this is the cover for the switch box here's the little uh, switch protector and you, this is up over here. Here's the old switch. Here's the uh, information. It's just a regular old uh, 120 volt toggle switch. It is a fairly high current. I measured the power consumption on the saw at about 1350 watts when it's running. So here's the little on off. You have to put the on towards the up because then the uh, the automatic shutoff comes down and pushes the switch down. This was the switch cover I tried to use to uh, keep this one working, but it apparently didn't uh, didn't do the trick. It's oh, it did tear. Okay, that's what happened. So that uh, rubber boot tore and allowed water to get inside. I think I'll still use this. And I figure that that probably helps because this this is metal part takes the uh, constant pressure of that uh, shutoff lever that comes down and presses on that. Anyway, I'll get this back together and we'll see how it works. Okay, I got the switch back in there. I put the torn side on the bottom, put a little uh, adhesive down there, try to seal that up so the at least the intact side is on top. Okay, so I got the gasket back on there and then we'll see if that goes back in. Yes, yeah, so I've got everything back in there. The tricky bit is there's this little tiny screw. You have to pull the uh, plastic box out, and then this screw runs into the flange on the faceplate to kind of hold everything together. So you get that, and you get your rubber gasket in there, and then you can screw everything back in. So, yeah, there we go. We got the switch back in. I put my piece of uh, duct tape over the top there just to keep water from getting into the back even though this is a sealed switch it seemed to help last time so it just kind of keeps keeps all this area dry see how that works there when the, when the saw hits the bottom of the cut that little tab pushes the switch down so I don't have to readjust that the switch is in the same position as before be sure to get a good switch there. I think the original switch was just a regular old one and then I replaced it with a regular switch but I put a better uh, boot over it because I think this is the original one. It just had this kind of rubber thing over the top and so I put one of these with the metal tip over the rubber because I think what happened originally was this part wore through the rubber boot switch got wet and failed so the second time I put the boot with the metal tip on it but then the boot tore down at the bottom so this time I am uh, using also a water and oil resistant switch I think I'm back in business so just wanted to pass along that little repair tip if you have one of these saws you can check out my YouTube channel I have some other videos I did some other videos with this saw in it as kind of a side topic and uh, as always thanks for watching